Hello, today we will be talking about lactic acidosis, the diagnosis of it and everything concerned with lactic acidosis. Let's try, let's jump right in. We have a, a definition here that we have an elevated lactate buildup in the bloodstream and then we have a pH of less than 7.35. And we also have a ser serum bicarbonate of less than 20 millimol per liter. And the lactic concentration is also usually greater than 4 millimol per liter. If we dig a little bit deeper to understand the diagnosis of it, we have to understand acidosis. So acidosis is a state in the body caused by an overproduction of acids. And if an increase in acid overwhelms the body's acid, ba uh, acid base balance, so we have a control system here, the blood will then become acidic, namely pH of less than 7.35. And understandably, in acidosis, there is an acid buildup in the blood, which could occur in two different ways. There is an excessive loss of a bicarbonate from the blood, known as metabolic acidosis, or we have a buildup of carbon dioxide due to poor lung function or depressed breathing called respirator respiratory acidosis. So in the first scenario, we have a lactate, a normal byproduct of glucose and amino acid metabolism, and this will accumulate then as lactic acid, lactic acid, and we then say that the lactic acidosis is a form of metabolic acidosis that arises when a person produces too much or underutilized, so not used lactic acid, without the body being able to adjust. So inter interestingly now, lactic acidosis is the most common cause of metabolic acidosis and this is most common cause in hospitalized patients. It is worth now knowing that there are two main types of lactic acidosis. We have type A lactic acidosis and type B and there's also an unusual form of lactic acidosis known as D lactic acidosis or D lactate encephalopathy and we will discuss now the type A. Let's discuss type A and its causes and before talking about the others and the diagnosis of lactic acidosis we will deal with the type A. So type A is the most severe form. So please note that type A most severe it is associated with impaired tissue oxygenation meaning that your body muscles and tissues are not receiving enough oxygen and therefore these body muscles and tissues have to somehow break down glucose through an alternative metabolism known as anaerobic respiration and this will then produce energy. An anaerobic respiratory respiration is simply defined as a glucose breakdown for energy but without the use of oxygen. An anaerobic respiratory respiration now produces this lactic acid rather than carbon dioxide and water. So in type A lactic acidosis, the lactic acid accumulates due to the tissue hypoperfusion. Hypoperfusion is a term that describes the reduced amount of blood flow and the cause of hypoperfusion and type A lactic acidosis is usually shock. So it could either be a hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic or septic shock. And shock is a life-threatening condition in which blood flow to the organs is decreased. And the blood pressure is usually low here and there is a reduced oxygen delivery to the tissues causing then organ damage and sometimes death. Okay. So in hypovolemic show, uh, shock, the low blood volume results in below average levels of blood entering the heart with every heartbeat and therefore less than usual uh, blood is being pumped out to the body and its cells. So in contrast now, the cardiogenic shock is due to the inadequate pumping action of the heart, also causing this lower than normal levels of blood pumping out with every heartbeat. Sepsis is due to an infection that triggers a severe body-wide response, including fever, including weakness, rapid heart rate, rapid breathing rate, and an increased number of white blood cells. It can lead to septic shock, which causes then dangerously low blood pressure, resulting in internal organs typically receiving too little blood, causing them to malfunction. So, now, Let's focus on type B lactic acidosis. We can say it is less severe. So type A is the most severe, type B is less severe. And why is, is it less serious? Because unlike type A lactic acidosis, it occurs when there is normal tissue perfusion and there's normal aerobic respiration. So glucose and oxygen are used now to produce energy. However, another problem causes the production of lactic acidosis since evidence of systemic hypoperfusion is not apparent here. 
So, and what, which, which mechanism is this? The mechanism involved in type B lactic acidosis include toxin induced blockage of the cellular metabolism and the regional areas of ischemia. So toxin induced blockage of cellular metabolism results from a toxin that arises from either an excess production of acids or decreased acid elimination. And this process now can lead to ischemia, which is any reduction in blood flow resulting in decreased oxygen and decreased nutrient supplies. And we will, we will soon discuss how this happens in patients such as those who take an accidental or uh, intentional acute overdose of, for example, metformin. So let's get down uh, to it by discussing the causes of uh, type B lactic acidosis. So one cause of type B lactic acidosis is diabetes mellitus. So in type 2 diabetes mellitus, treatment with this b guanate therapy, so metformin, uh, can cause a type of uh, B lactic acidosis. So metformin is most likely to generate lactic acidosis when high levels result from an accidental or intentional acute overdose. Also, metformin therapy in patients with reduced kidney function can cause toxic levels since these drugs are almost entirely removed by the kidneys and therefore resulting in lactic acid accumulation. Moderate degrees of lactic acidosis unrelated to metformin therapy can also occur in some patients with diabetes and this includes, for example, hyperlactatemia or an elevated blood lact lactate concentration and in patients with diabetic ketoacidosis. Good. An additional cause now to type B lactic acidosis is chronic alcoholism. So in alcoholism, lactate production is usually normal. However, because alcohol reduces the liver's normal function, then lactate is not used by the liver. And usually lactic acid is taken to the liver by the blood. And there it is either converted to glucose or it is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. Also, a cause of type, uh, also a cause of type B lactic acidosis are some medications. We have, for example, beta adrenergic agonist, for example, intravenous epinephrine is also associated with lactic acidosis. It causes hypoperfusion of the gastrointestinal tract, increasing the lactic production and thereby reducing lactic uptake by the liver and then we have the problem again. In another instance, we can say that patients treated with high dose inhaled beta agonists such as albuterol and salmeterol reported also having lactic acidosis. Such patients usually have severe bronchospasm leading to, leading to increased pyruvate and also lactate production due to considerable respiratory effort here. Pyruvate is an essential molecule in the energy production pathway and when pyruvate accumulates it is converted to lactate. That is the uh, chemical uh, pathway. Another cause now of type B uh, lactic acidosis is malignancy. So tumors may cause the affected tissues to, rel to rely on anaerobic metabolism. And other tumors may also increase the rates of lactic lactate production. And usually once the cancer is removed or destroyed by chemotherapy, ir irradiation or surgery, it corrects the lactic acidosis in these patients. Now, Another cause of type B lactic acidosis is HIV infection. In patients with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS, it is common to have severe infections that may lead to then sepsis. Also, HIV drugs may disrupt the normal functions of these cells, mitochondria, so mitochondria where the energy is produced. And in a, in a nutshell now, what we can say that chronic uh, lactic acidosis can occur in the absence of sepsis even in patients with HIV. So furthermore, another cause of type B lactic acidosis is mitochondrial dysfunction. So this dysfunction is especially seen in congenital or acquired mitochondrial defects. These defects now impair normal energy producing processes in the cells, but may instead generate lactic acidosis. An example of this is seen in, for example, um, MELAS syndrome. MELAS stands for mitochondrial encephaloma, encephaloma, uh, encephalomyopathy with lactic acidosis and stroke-like episodes. Very strange name, I know. So similar mitochondrial dysfunction can also be caused by medicines such as the hypnotic sedative propofol, for example, and antidiabetic uh, medication linezolid.
Let's uh, focus now on D lactic acidosis. It's a, it is an unusual and rare form of lactic acidosis. Uh, we have to understand that there are two kinds of lactic acid. These are, for example, D lactic acid. We have LL lactic acids, and bacteria often produce this D lactic acid, which humans metabolize very slowly. So D lactic acid persists in the blood circulation, and interestingly, the production of the D lactate in the gut is then caused by two factors. The first case is the absence or reduced length of the small intestine, which is normally responsible for the absorption of most simple carbohydrates. And the second is the presence of colon in, continu in continuity, where all the unabsorbed carbohydrates are present as a substrate for fermentation of the colonic bacterial flora. So thus, we can say that D-lactic acidosis occurs in patients with some sort of intestinal malabsorption. And in these patients, substantial amounts of glucose and starch are then fermented by this intestinal bacteria to multiple organic acids, including now D-lactic acid. And often such patients have then, for example, short bowel syndrome. So they had an operation. So short bowel syndrome can occur when parts of the small intestine were missing or were damaged at the birth or have been, as we said, surgically removed. Short bowel syndrome leads to an increased load now of undigested carbohydrates, including simple sugars in the colon. And as a result, the amount of uh, organic acid produced exceeds the amount that can be metabolized by the healthy individuals. So now, and uh, then, then we can imagine what happens. This leads to an accumulation of organic acids, including the lactate, and then it results to in a more acidic environment than normally. And interestingly, the lower pH that favors the growth of bacteria responsible for, the producing, uh, for producing this D and L lactate as they are acid resistant. And this leads to further decrease in the pH. Thus, we generate a vicious cycle. Okay? Other causes of D lactic acidosis include a rapid and high dose of intravenous infusion of propylene glucol and diabetic ketoacidosis. And in these settings, the D-lactic acid is a metabolic product of, a, of other accumulating metabolites, of other lactaldehydes with propylene glucol and methyl glucosal in diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, let us discuss uh, the symptoms and signs of lactic acidosis. So the symptoms of lactic acidosis include abdominal or stomach discomfort. We have decreased appetite, we have diarrhea, we have fast and shallow breathing, we have a general feeling of discomfort, muscle pain, cramping, unusual sleepiness, unusual tiredness, unusual weakness. And however, these symptoms are dominated by the underlying cause. So for instance, in type A, you would see symptoms of shock, such as a reduction in systemic blood pressure. We have then cool, clammy extremities in hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock and we have impaired mental status uh, can also be seen. And in type B, you would notice toxin ingestion and organ failure, depending on the cause. Whereas uh, neurologic symptoms, for example, can include then confusion. We have ataxia, slurred speech, and this can occur of the high carbohydrate ingestion and are characteristic of the D lactic acidosis. And when diagnosing lactic acidosis, we need to know the reference lactate level. So the standard plasma lactic concentration is about 0.5 to 1.5 millimol per liter. And in contrast now, lactic acidosis is generally defined as a, lac uh, as a plasma lactate concentration, as we said, of more than 4 millimol per liter. And this definition then still applies even when the symptoms of acidosis are not obvious. Okay, so there is no symptoms but these values. So also the blood pH would also be... Uh, less than 7.35 we said, so it all adds up to this. A blood sample will be taken then from the patient to check if their parameters match with this definition of lactic acidosis, which is, as we said, pH of less than 7.35, bicarbonate less than 20 millimol per liter, and a lactic concentration greater than 4 millimol per liter. So, now let us recap. Main points. And the summary is, we have acidosis is a state in the body with a pH of less than 7.35. It's caused by an overproduction of acid. In lactic acidosis, lactic acid accumulates when a person produces too much or underutilizes lactic acidosis without their body being able to adjust. So there are two main types now of lactic acidosis. We have type 1 
and uh, type A and type B. So we have type A being more severe because it is caused by hypoperfusion due to shock, like hypovolemic, cardiogenic, or septic shock. The type B lactic acidosis occurs when there's normal tissue perfusion, but other reasons cause lactic acidosis accumulation. And some of the causes of type B lactic acidosis include then diabetes mellitus with chronic alcoholism, beta adrenergic agonist, malignancy, HIV infection, mitochondrial dysfunctions, both inherited and uh, induced by medications, and so on. d lactic acidosis is rare, we said, and occurs in patients with intestinal malabsorption disorders, such as short bowel syndrome, and the symptoms of lactic acidosis include abdominal or stomach discomfort, we have decreased appetite, we have diarrhea, we have fast and shallow breathing, a general feeling of discomfort, muscle pain, cramping, unusual sleepiness, tiredness, weakness, and so on. So you see uh, many, many symptoms. I al already have 10 here. Remember that the diagnosis of lactic acidosis down requires blood pH of less than 7.35, lactic concentration of greater than 4 millimol per liter, and lactate, uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is the thing, and uh, bicarbonate less than 20 millimol per liter. These three things should be there. I thank you very much for listening and I hope you now uh, understand a little bit what lactic acidosis is. Everything with diabetes related to the acid-base balance are always difficult to understand. Not only for medical doctors, not only, uh, but for all patients. And, and usually patients have no clue what this is about. And actually, after giving this presentation, maybe you have a little bit clue what I'm, what I'm talking about. Hopefully you know that uh, the main message I have is that the doctor should take a blood sample from you and then he will measure these parameters and if, we will, if he will see that the pH is less than 7.35 and so on, he will see the bicarbonate is less than 20 millimol per liter, he will see that the lactate level is more than 4 millimol per liter, then he knows that something is wrong and this is maybe a lactic acidosis. And then you can discuss all these types, type A, type B, uh, what is the cause, what not. The main message is if you have diabetes and you have these values, then you have lactic acidosis and we need to treat it. That is the main message. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.